<laughs> Hi, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and today is Wednesday, February the 7th, and I am joined by my good friend Danny Lunacy, uh, uh, as per your YouTube channel. And we didn't even really say hello, we just started recording <laughs> because I tell you, that happens with me a lot. I start talking, just even saying hello, and then all of a sudden, you know, the conversation starts flowing. So thanks for, for catching that for me and saying, we better start recording. <laughs> so tell me, I, you asked me how I was, and I said, wonderful and yet odd. And you said that it was a lot of intense energy. So tell me what you mean. Yeah. Um, and just looking at the behavioral patterns or experiences, the patterned experiences that uh, grace or the universe sends to me and apparently all beings to kind of, you know, free up some parts of our mind to take on a new perception and, and behave a new way. And it, it just looks like uh, a rapid fire barrage of patterned experiences just being delivered to everybody. And, and, and I, I don't see anybody is really immune to it. And some, <laughs> my heart goes out to some people that are just at their wits end and just, all they can really do is is break down and cry. And it's just really, it's an intense journey right now. And it, it's that way for everybody that I know. Yeah, it is that way for everybody that's coming to my path as well. Myself included. I, I won't, that's why I said, you asked me how I was doing. And I'm wonderful on one hand and feeling very odd on the other. And I guess that's um, attributable to the fact that, you know, what's happening for all of us, I think, and some of us maybe are, not, I won't even say coping, but handling it because of the fact that we've opened our, I will speak for myself, I've opened my mind and I am considering the fact that I'm a multidimensional, multi-leveled, multi-layered being. And so I view myself at this point of being capable, although I don't always comprehend what is happening, but capable of holding two, three, four positions at once on any given subject. Um, and I, I really am starting to feel deeply and intensely that that alone, that willingness, if you will, to be open and to say it's okay to be able to hold these different ideas, thoughts, and feelings all at one time has made it, for me anyway, a little easier um, to be able to look at, see maybe some of these things that flow in and out of my own trajectory, my own life. And maybe not take them as intensely, I guess, or something. I don't know. Not view it as life and death situations, so to, so to speak. You know what I mean? I don't know. Again, that's something I'm just kind of feeling. But yeah, well, I've got uh, I've got a, quite a bit to say about this aspect because, in your own words, what you're talking about is a concept that I call. Uh, Penance, pending, uh, pendence, you know, these different phonetics that, that sound similar. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got a new way to look at those. And when, when I looked up the definition of the word pending or p 
depend. It uh, it had the flavor of actively in in a decision making process, and it, when you're looking at the court systems, it's okay. Well, you know the the court's taking a look at all the information. They haven't made a decision yet. It's pending, and and looking at the prefix de, you know, if you put it on a word, it usually means to remove that property. So like to debone is to remove bones, to, to deburr is to remove a burr, to declaw, remove claws. So it's to remove. And so the word depend means to remove us from the active decision-making process. It means to divert us into a decision because once we've made a decision, we've got a perception and then our behavior is, is predictable and controllable as long as they can control our perception. And the way they do that is by depending us. So the act of going from a state of dependence to a state where we are uh, fully pended again, you know, we've got to get back our pending. So we repend. And that process is uh, is penance. Mm. So we have to repent. We have to get back to our active decision making process for ascension, because ascension is all about changing perceptions. Wow. <laughs> I really like the way you think. I, I swear, I really like the way you think. Thank you. I never thought of it like that. And the moment you say words like, because now they're so heavily charged, the word repent, you know what that's charged with. I mean, you know, everybody. Wow. Wow. Well, see, you brought up again, see that, that the moment we, we began speaking in regards to that, that brought up self-responsibility again for me, uh, because when you don't, when you're not going to, the, the definition most folks think of when they think of depend, you're not depending on something outside of yourself if you're taking self-responsibility. And that's without looking those words up and knowing exactly what they mean. That's just going off of, you know. And that's, I had a conversation this morning with the CARM, the Empress of Time. And interestingly enough, the, the frequencies, the time frequencies by the numbers right now is all about self-responsibility. And I, I, I was amazed to learn that from her because that has been floating in my field for, well, quite some time. You and I had a conversation. You know, yourself, my, my, me, and Lisa, we had that conversation about self-responsibility. I believe Lisa was in on that one. Yeah, I think she was. Okay, I thought so. I have been so busy. I haven't had a chance to go back and listen to any of my own conversations, and I love to do that because I get a lot out of going back and listening to my conversations with folks. Because as my consciousness grows, and make no mistake, my consciousness is expanding at a rate like I can hardly keep up. <laughs> um. I get more out of it when I go in and just listen to the conversation over again, even though I participated. Yeah. Well, I find that even some of the videos that, that I do or just some of the, Hmm, you know, maybe that was a, an early take and, and I just don't really for whatever reason feel like publishing it and and it'll sit there and I'll just go back and listen to it later it's like uh it's like my own voice talking to me through a time warp and 
I just, uh, I'm blown away by how many times those words just reduces me to tears. And it's just exactly what I needed to hear right then. I've, I've had that same feeling, actually. Uh, for the most part, I have not hesitated. I, for whatever reason, I just, and I don't even know, I'm just driven, I guess. It's a, I just put it out. I don't even, I used to um, listen to the conversation first, and I stopped doing that. Um, because I don't think that's my choice to make at this point. I feel like I'm having this conversation for a reason. Um, and and it, if, I, if I go back and listen to it first and I didn't like something I said or didn't like the way I acted or looked on camera, then I don't, I don't want that to be a reason I don't do something. So for me... Once I accepted, because there was some kicking and screaming at first on my part, that this is something that I apparently agreed to do, I don't do that to myself anymore. Because there's, you know, I have an ego, same as everybody else, you know. And so I don't, I, I don't want to give myself the opportunity to back out of anything. So I just put it out, <clears throat> record it. I mean, I think that's why I, I never could learn how to edit either. I think that was on purpose. I gave up trying <laughs> because I, I think, because I'm a perfectionist too. And I know that about myself. I'm aware of that about myself. And so by doing it and putting it out without ever looking at it, I don't give myself the opportunity to go back and critique myself because that's a recipe for disaster for me, because I already know that. Yeah, well, when, when the meat of the videos that you're putting together is, is just, uh, you know, you dialoguing from your heart, uh, it, it, you can certainly just throw that out there, and, and that's one way to just uh, jump right into the deep end of self-allowance and, and don't give yourself... Uh, you know, a chance to stand on the edge of that high dive and, and really, really get a feel for just how far that looks. You know, you're just, you're, you're jumping right off. And, and that's, uh, that's great. Um, Self-allowance is where, is where self-responsibility starts. It's a platform for just about everything. Well, I know for myself, and this I think might have had something to do with the whole self-responsibility issue coming up for me yet and again, of course, and that is again, keeping it to just talking about myself. If I, if I think long, I think wrong. I know that. Um, if I, if I, because I, I look for a long, long time, I didn't trust myself and I, I, whatever the reasons I know, yes, we all have, um, programming and conditioning that we have to get over. Um, but there's that if I take a look at something for too long or go to try to critique myself, then I, that's, that's, like I said, that's just a recipe for disaster. And then also, I've seen, I don't, I, I have no image that I'm trying to uphold. I am who I am. And I, I don't want to get all caught up in, well, Maybe I shouldn't have said that because that's yeah. going to upset this one, that one, or the other one. I, I can't worry about that. I, this is not what this is about for me. I have never, ever, ever tried to come off as some sort of damn guru trying to tell people what to do for themselves because that's not what this is about for me. This is about me finding out about me and having conversations with people that interest me. That's what it says on my channel trailer. That's what it's always been about. And so if I'm going to be honest with myself, then I have to just do it and put it out there and 
screw what it looks like. If, if I can learn something from myself, if I make a misstep or if I don't get a concept in whatever way I'm trying to get it, then I will eventually get it right. And that's okay because this, I love what you said about self-allowance because I didn't even realize that's what that was that I was doing or am doing, still doing. I, this is not a contest or a, um, yeah, popularity contest for me. I could give two craps. Re I mean, seriously, I, I don't care. I've, I've had some pretty icky comments on my channel as of late. I, apparently, uh, someone said something to me. You know, I don't go and look at my lives either. I haven't ever gone back and looked at the Facebook lives and I know I did a lot of crying. Oh, well get over it. <laughs> you know, so what? I'm as real as they go. <laughs> and I, I mean, when you talk from your heart, tears just happen, you know, it, it's just a, a extra way to release that uh, intense energy. Yes. And I know for my own self now, I didn't, but I know now that the holding back of that em that energy, the stuffing down and trying to make everybody else feel comfortable by not expressing that sort of energy is exactly why I ended up at 490 pounds. And I'm not willing to stuff or put down or deny anything about myself any longer by the same token i'm not i'm not holding a gun to anybody's head to watch this conversation or any conversation that i have either yeah so but the i i saw a video this morning um I follow a young man by the name of the Leo King. He's an astrologer. And I, I suspected as much that there's, um, there is an intensity. Everything is energy, every single thing. And all the planets affect us. Everything affects us because everything has magnetic fields. And we are in between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. Right now, we're in between. And, the, and, and all of the planets have been moving in forward trajectories right now. And they have been for several months. And I don't, I'm not an astrologer and I won't pretend to, to, to comprehend it all, but I'm, I am beginning to comprehend a lot more than I have because I've been following it for, you know, the last three or four years, teaching myself little bits and pieces as I go. And this in-between stage that we're in right now, it, the 31st was, was a doorway. It was definitely a particular ushering in of a specific energy. I felt it at the time that it happened. Um, the 31st, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the 31st is when Randy did that beautiful closing statement that I read. And oh, this is the love portal you're yes. talking about. And I didn't even realize it didn't dawn on me when I created that hashtag love portal open now that, oh, yeah, the eclipse was the same day. We are right in the middle, smack in between today, by the way of those energies the solar eclipse will be happening a week from today and the lunar eclipse was a week ago today so we're smack in the middle of that love portal and and that's why i'm beginning to think that or at least it's at least part of it why the energy feels so intense for some and more intense for others. 
it's almost like it's it's a this is just a feeling I have not anything I can point to at all but there's a there are questions being asked of every heart at this moment in time I feel and some can hear them and some are being affected by them in ways that they're not, they weren't expected. They, they didn't expect to react or feel in this manner. And it's a bit confusing. I really feel like that is part of what this intensity is that you speak of. Oh, uh, this reminds me of a story. Tell me a story, Danny. <laughs> uh, what you're talking about, about, uh, um, what were the words that you said? Uh, people were, their hearts were asking a lot of questions of well, them? Or, or? I, yeah, I think the energy itself, the universe is asking questions of each and every heart at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and just that visual, um, and, and in seeing how these energies are <laughs> asking the questions pretty intensely <laughs> to, to everybody's hearts and, and asking them to make a decision. And I can see that, uh, there's a, a, a wide range of reactions that, that people have to that. And uh, some try to, to block out those questions, block out the voice of that energy, and that only makes it more intense. And uh, the, the story that I have for you is, it, it's a little nutshell story, probably about one of the most healing experiences that I had had. Uh, up to this point in my life. And uh, I had heard a lot of stories about psychedelic mushrooms and they uh, came into my life and were offered to me. And uh, I kept them for a while and did research on them. And one day I just knew, okay, well, I've done enough research. I've talked to enough people today is my day. And, you know, I set an intention and wow, <laughs> I'm getting all choked up just talking about this. So I set an intention and uh, uh, went out, got some food at a, at a local deli. And uh, one of my friends who was at the deli was telling me, Hey, uh, you know, I know you're going to go off and do your mushroom ceremony today. And just, I just feel like telling you a story from my past. And that's that sometimes, not every time, but after you're, after you're kind of over the peak and you're coming down on the backside of a mushroom experience, you might feel yourself come to you, tap you on the shoulder, say, Hey, there's some things about, about the way we're living life that we need to change. So my friend says, one of two things can happen here. You can either try to ignore and shut that voice out, in which case you're gonna have a bad trip because all your filters are down and you can't block it out. Or right now, you can resolve to meet that voice, to listen to what they have to say and to make changes that you need to make. So I went home and ate my food, cleaned my entire apartment up. And I got a pencil out, just sheets of paper from the printer. And I just started writing down every last thing that I thought that I would ever bring to myself that we need to talk about. And I filled up, what, like three sheets front and back. So I was ready. And I had my mushroom ceremony. 
that beautiful experience. And on the back side, I felt myself come to me. I grabbed my sheets of paper. I'm like, all right, what do you want to talk about? And the voice says, throw those papers away. You're way too hard on yourself. The best example of self-love that you've ever given yourself was removing yourself from a toxic marriage. So just heal up. Allow yourself to just heal up. And I think I cried for about two days. Wow. And that was worth more than five, ten years of psychotherapy could have ever changed in me. Wow. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's, I've, I, I've never uh, had the opportunity to, to, to partake of a mushroom ceremony, but I have heard that it can offer that sort of healing. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually very grateful that you went through that and, and shared that now with me. And of course, with everyone else who will hear this later, too. Uh, we're talking about real stuff right now. That is the most beautiful thing I've, I've ever heard. And I, I can relate to that because I'm really hard on myself, too. And it's unfortunate that I, I actually finally only realized how hard I am on myself because... I was seeing how hard I was being on everyone around me. Oh, wow. And when you're honest enough to really look at all of your actions, all of them. I mean, I never, I, I finally understood. I finally comprehended the fact that because I always thought I'm not hard on everybody. Well, I don't get it. But the reason I didn't get it is because I was so hard on me. And I thought, well, if I can do it, and I get what you're saying in regards to allowing ourselves that self-allowance is key, actually, because there are lots of folks that are still walking around in relationships that aren't serving anyone or anything. Um, the jobs that aren't serving anyone or anything. Um, and, and we make these little excuses to ourselves. I know I did that. I did that for the last three years of my marriage. He's such a good guy. He's always been there for me. How can I do that to him? You know, I now that I'm actually starting to get my health back, I'm unhappy and I want to go. You know, all of these little excuses that I made to myself, all the while, it was still harmful to both of us. And he is a good guy. And he always was a good guy and will always be a good guy it's just that it wasn't good for us yeah and it's not it was really for me there's there, there's lots of stuff like that in in folks lives and and some folks think that think that it's easier to just continue to deny that but that these are the questions i feel and they're subtle especially right now in the midst of this portal, they're subtle. And, it, and, and if we're still, I love the way BZ talked about folks that are pulling the covers up over their head and the pillow down over their face, trying to hide from this, but we can't. That is so over and that's why it's so intense. Yeah, our, our filters are coming down. Every, <clears throat> excuse me, 
um, our filters are just perceptions. You know, they're, they're combinations of perceptions and we can overlay a couple of filters on and say, hey, this is what I see when I look at this situation. And, you know, what you were talking about, and, and we started this all off with, with the idea of being pending, is to be able to swap those different perceptions in and out, like different lenses, just like you're, you're at the optometrist. And, you know, they're like, oh, A or B, one or two. And then you're like, I don't know, let me see those again. Stay a little bit longer on A and B. I want to see how I feel with those. And, and we can do the same thing with, with our perceptions. And I just love the, the definition that I came across one time. I don't know if this was one of those memes that was floating around the internet or whatever, but the word miracle was defined as changes in perception. Well, I, you know, I used to say, and I don't even think I really comprehended what I was saying when I would say this. I, I had said, I don't even remember who I was talking to. It's been so long ago now in regards to, you know, sitting with a family member, let's say, that has known you your entire life. So, you know, there's that in common. And you're, you're both sitting in a car and there's, I don't know, been a car accident or, or anything. It doesn't matter. It's still, even, even though they're very similar, the perceptions are going to be different as it, of course, must always be. As all of us, each one of us is a completely unique portion of source and it is every experience every thought every thing that we've heard read listened to seen been a part of that makes up those perception filters that we have and so of course it's it's not even possible for folks to have the exact same view of something. We can't. That will never, ever be. And quite frankly, <laughs> I think that's the entire point of this whole game or whatever. That's the source of the insanity right there is, is trying to, to force us all to live with the same perceptions. Exactly. Instead of saying, oh, wait a minute, okay. I can see where you're coming from. It's not, not maybe for me, but that's okay too. And I mean, really, when you get right down to it, it really isn't that big a deal to, to, to look at things that way. Um, you know, if someone is considering, oh, I don't know, buying a car, let's say, are you just going to look at a picture or are you going to get out there and walk around it and see it from different perspectives. Um, it sounds rather simple, but, but yet when, whenever you, you try to translate that into something like your perspective on, I don't know, pick a topic, spirituality, religion, mm -hmm. politics, all of these things, it's, all, it's the exact same thing. And at this point, and I feel like, you know, bringing it back to this time that we're in right now, I think just allowing yourself to open your, broaden your perspective, allow those things to just rumble around in there a little bit. Again, I think I said this, we were coming home from Knoxville. I don't even know if it went out because the live was going in and out. We were in the mountains, but listening to an idea and a thought, it's like, oh, I don't know, meeting somebody for coffee. You know? It's a cup of coffee. It's not a marriage proposal. <clears throat> you know, you can think about a thing without 
agreeing on a thing. You can hold it and look at it and, you know, really, I love what you say about inspect and respect because take some time with it. Yeah. Turn it around a little bit. Let it, and this is with anything. This is with anything. This is the way I, okay, I'll, I'll give you another uh, thought about this. There's a fellow, his name is Roger Indigo, and he ha has been posting in Conscious Conversation um, in regards to adopted belief systems. Well, some time ago, I decided that I don't believe anything anymore. I don't. It's too hard to change your mind once you start adopting a belief system. It becomes a little more concrete. But by opening my mind and allowing everything to come in, regardless of what it is, I might not adopt it and take it as my own and start using it, but it's at least in there. And I have, in some cases later on, come across more information I went oh you know that puzzle piece I picked up a little while ago that was hey I can see where maybe not all of it but some of that kind of fits here oh yeah so this we're we're right on well we passed the doorstep we're right in the middle of of the the whole continuation of the conversation of authorship of perception you know, we started with the direct observation and that's what you're talking about. I got my, I got my puzzle piece, you know, I've been inspecting it. I've been respecting it. I've been holding it up next to other puzzle pieces, seeing if they fit, turning it around. And, uh, you know, I've just, I'm holding on to it. I don't, I don't know what it, it's there for yet, but let's describe the process of how we get from that point to a place of knowing. And, and, and that's what you're, you're describing. And what I've noticed in myself is, okay, the process to come to a place of knowing, I use the acronym LOOK, L-O-O-K. And that stands for locate, observe, orient, and know. So in the way that that I have inside this vision in my head to present it, that word L-O-O-K is animated and just kind of floating out there to see. And you take the K off and you move it through every step in that process, the locate, observe, orient, and know. And because you haven't done this before, it might feel a little crazy, and the K slips in between the two O's, and it's L-O-K-O, -O, so loco might feel a little crazy. And when the K comes out to the front, and it's K-L-O-O, -O, it's like, hmm, look, you found the clue. And you found a clue, and you take the K away, you found a clue in the loo. The loo, among all that do. And because that's where you keep your do is in the loo. <clears throat> so this vision came down as a Dr. Seuss type of book like that. And when, when you're playing around with your puzzle pieces, when you take that etheric jar of all your observations and you dump them out onto your bed and you're playing around with them, at some point, you might see how some pieces fit together in a way that you've never seen before. And you're going to sense this overwhelming emotional experience inside you. And to make sure that you're at a place of knowing, you take all those raw puzzle pieces, the direct observations, and you disconnect and reconnect them. You look at every facet, you locate them, you observe them, you orient yourself with them, you describe it in simple language. Instead of applying a definition to, say, like the moon, I see a big spinning ball of rock in the sky. No, 
I see a light in the sky. It changes shape slightly every night. Keep it general like that. That's how you come to a place of knowing. And so the word see, we all want to see. See, that is sense and emotional experience, S-E-E. You know I'm writing these down, right? I see that. I see that. (laughs) And then when we're at a place of knowing with that, we're sensing an emotional experience of knowing, we now seek. And when you sense an emotional experience of knowing, when you're seeking, you'll be surprised what you find. But you might find maybe not what you're looking for. But you'll find something that's probably a lot more magical than that. Perhaps what we need. Yeah. And so once you're, once you're at a place of knowing you've basically acknowledged that your old perception is done and you're taking on a new one and you're going to, you're going to sense an emotional experience of disillusionment. And as that old perception fades away and the new perception comes in, it's going to blossom forth with changes in your behavior because all behavior has its roots in perception. And that behavior, that's your seed to the world. That's, hey, this is the product of me sensing an emotional experience of disillusionment. And your seed is what programs other people. Your behavior is your seed. And that's how the hundredth monkey effect works. So we start with do, the direct observation. And then we see. Like, holy cow, I need to come to a place of knowing. So how do we do that? We look. And when we come to a place of knowing about our emotional experience, then we're seeking. And that's just about the acknowledgement of it, of a new perception. And then seeding, that's about letting the behavior from that new perception display out into the world. Wow, I really experienced that for two weeks just recently. (laughs) I really, really, really. And it was really only as, as I made my journey home that I could see that seating. Wow. Now, now that you understand that process, you can see how every facet of that from us making a direct observation to us describing in general terms, our observation, staying in a state of, of pending penance around it and, uh, coming to a place of knowing a lot of times, well, basically what the news is, is giving us observations and telling us what meaning to assign to it, giving us our perceptions. Right. And then we've got, we've got plenty of, uh, plenty of pressures in society to keep us from changing our behavior to something that's, you know, more healthy and high vibrational for us. Uh, every every aspect, every facet of the the do see seek see flow is under attack in our society by the infrastructure itself. Well, and that's really where that self responsibility comes in, isn't it? Yeah. Um, to have the. Mm, Strength really isn't what it is. It's the courage, I think, for myself. That's what I had to do was I had to find the courage within myself to say, okay, well, uh, I'm willing to, because that's what it was for me anyway, I'm willing to do what it takes to, to, to pull it right here. 
to look at all of this and because that's not an easy task in and of itself, but that is self-responsibility. Yeah, these are the first steps uh, for ascension. You know, you got to, <laughs> you, you finally have had enough irritations and unpleasant experiences in your life that, all right, uh, something new and unknown has got to take a little less courage from me than staying in this known hellhole that, that I've chosen for myself. Right. And, and I'm the one that got me here. I'm the only one that can get me out. I've got to allow it. And yeah, you feel like you're on top of the, the highest high dive that you've ever seen. Yeah. And, and you just have to, to go with, with just what? Sometimes just your intuition. Just sometimes the only reason that you can make a choice is this is the only other option that, that I can see that's different from what I used to choose. Right. Agreed. And when, would you then feel, because that's what I'm feeling. Oh, wow. I'm having that uh, expansion <laughs> feeling right now. That, that feeling of standing, it, because I, I personally am not having that at this moment, that standing on the high dive thing. I am seeing that there are those that are, or that's my take on it. Maybe they're not, but that's my take on it. And <laughs> that's where I'm getting the feeling of the whole, um, you know, being asked questions, you know, of, mm -hmm. of their, their heart really. And, um, So it, standing on that high dive, trying to figure out for themselves, well, do I even really want to try to answer that? Because the answer might mean jumping off the high dive. Yeah. You know, it's like every, every little birdie, a, a, a flighted bird at, at, at one point had to, had to have the courage to take that risk to step off the edge of the nest. Yeah. Well, it feels like to me, like it's about, I mean, <laughs> I, to hear some tell the tale, take that step soon for yourself because something's going <laughs> to happen to shove you right off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mama, don't play for too long. At some point, somebody's going to be kicking your butt right out of the nest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that sentiment was was uh, pretty much spoken by one of my friends yesterday. Um, just talking about all the crazy things that you know happen in the world, and hey, you know when. When is some divine force going to come down here and just separate the low vibrations from the high vibrations or raise all the low vibrations or whatever? But it's getting, it's getting just about unbearable to live, with, to live with these irritations that we know are unnecessary. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I got a feeling it. That, I don't know. I feel. I. I was saying this um, the other day. I feel. And again, got nothing I can point to specifically, or I could point to everything specifically, one or the other. <laughs> um, there's a lot of stuff going on just under the surface, and. There's a, I feel a big wave of energy getting ready to slam. <laughs> and I, and I, it's almost like, I don't know. I, mm, I'm just not sure where, what I'm meant to do next in this, 
so it's been a little bit of a, I feel like, you know, on a surfboard, maybe I, well, I've, I've never surfed in my life, so I really don't know what I'm saying here. Um, I, I have been on a seesaw where, you know, you're trying to make it stay, you're standing on it, not sitting on it, and you're trying to make it stay level. So I have, I feel a little like that at the moment, like, you know, trying to make sure I got it all so I don't actually like fall off of it. <laughs> um, but it does feel for me like, like, like a buildup of, of an energetic that I don't, I, I don't know what it is specifically but it feels big. It feels bigger than anything I've ever felt before. Um, so I find that kind of interesting in, 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 in all of this. It's, it, in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel like if anyone is like on that edge getting ready to step off, it's okay. It's not like you're, I mean, I don't know, for me, I know I'm an eternal being no matter what. Whether I get to be in this particular physicality or not, oh, well, whatevs. I, well, again, I was so ill for so long, I kind of gave up being attached to this physical. Um, and I, 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 that is not something I fear. Um. You know, after 20 surgeries, you kind of, you kind of not worried about that. Um, but I just, I don't know. I feel like the holding on to says it's like that. Um, I've heard it put too. like, if there's a, if there's a tsunami and you try to hold on to something, well, you're going to be dashed on the rocks that you're holding on to. But if you try to get out in the middle and kind of go with it, you, you got a better chance <laughs> of not being <clears throat> slammed against the rocks. And I kind of feel like that's sort of, for me, that's the energetic I'm feeling. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and on my vision space, uh, the rocks that I see are, uh, these static situations that we have set up for ourselves in our lives. Uh, we've made agreements to offer our behavior on a continuing subscription basis in perpetuity. Uh, and, and we made these agreements uh, earlier in our life, sometimes decades earlier in our lives when, wow, you know what? Uh, my my looking glass full of puzzle pieces or direct observations like it was only a third full back then and now i've got three jars the same size to hold these observations and i've got new perceptions and you know if i'm going to force myself to live within these static behavioral contracts that i got into from a place of darkness from you know, I hadn't, I hadn't lived life. I hadn't experienced what I needed to experience then. But now that I've experienced at least enough to prove to me that there's a different way that I can live life and that the only thing standing in between me and living life a different way is me allowing myself to choose differently, there's only so long that you can continue to live with your old perceptions, your old agreements. When you know, when you are, when you have arrived at a place of seeking, it's just the, the, the seeding, the, the taking on the new perception, it, it happens by itself. And, yeah. and a person's vibration you know, is somebody a high vibrational being or not? Vibrations just measure cycles. So from the start of the, you know, when the universe brings you an observation that shows you that your perceptions are inaccurate, from the start of that process till, you know, 
you acknowledging, letting go, going with a void in your perceptions for a while till you get another observation that maybe you can use to piece it in to get through that whole perception cycle. That's one, one iteration. If you're a high vibrational being, you can get through it faster. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I agree. I've seen, I've seen where um, in, in my own life, in my own life, as my consciousness has expanded and my vibrational field has changed, I've seen what I describe as, you know, because our, I, I feel like our vibrational field extends outside of our physical bodies to a specific, you know, I don't know. It might even be more than just at arm's length for all I know. But what I have seen and what I've experienced for myself is that once I started changing my vibrational behavior even, there have been folks and situation in my lives that just, it's like the, it's the vibrational little bubbles kind of, you know, they go off in different directions and that's all okay because I'm not interested in trying to force anyone's bubble to be more like mine. I, I'm not interested in that. That's not my job. It's not, it's, it's, it's not enjoyable. And it's, it's not, I mean, for anyone. So I'd much say, much rather say, mm, I love you. Be well. And meet for coffee every now and again, because again, <laughs> I'm not asking you to marry me. Um, so, and that's all okay. And it's like a lot of folks get all freaked out and think, well, you know, they've gone off the deep end. Well, I can't change your mind about that either. <laughs> you know, maybe I like it in the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know. Well, you know, the, the deep end that we're jumping into now is just the shallow end that we're going to be leaving later on. Oh, I feel that's a true statement. I feel that's a very true statement. And I feel like maybe that's what I feel coming. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I saw a lot of what I witnessed over the last two weeks. Well, I've known it for longer than this two weeks, actually. I would say maybe even the middle to late, around November sometime, I could sense and feel how big all of what I have just experienced really is. And I still feel it's much bigger than even I can feel around. Because it, it covers more than that. Yeah, it reminds me of those videos where they'll start off zoomed way in and all you'll see is just one color on the whole screen and they'll slowly zoom out and you know each time you get more information and in, you know your brain changes what you think it is and uh you know that by the time you get all the way zoomed out there's no way that you would have ever guessed that Oh, I was looking at a, what a basketball the whole time. You just, there's no way that you would have even been there. And, uh, and that's the same way it is with, with the energies that are, uh, I should just say taking over the earth because we're all awash in them and, mm -hmm. and we're all, we're all learning that we just have to let go of the old and that, uh, trust that grace is sending the current to carry us off in the right direction. Um, 
because <laughs> I know that a, a, a hell of a lot of my irritations in life came from, from trying to steer myself away from that current. And, and now the energies are just overwhelming. Like it would just be a futile, tiring, exhausting process to try to do anything, but just hold myself together while I watch the scenery change. Yes. I have to say that, uh, Along with watching that scenery change, because I've been I've been seeing that scenery change quite a bit. Um, being gentle with myself in regards to my own perceptions of those scenery changes as well. Yeah. And, and knowing that they are changing so quickly that I, I, I'm allowed to go, wait a minute, uh, hold up, uh, <laughs> you lost me over here, and I, I'm be okay with that, you know? Yeah, so that's self-allowance is, is crucial because if, if you don't carve yourself safe space, you know, like, okay, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I have training wheels or not, but I'm going to pretend I do. And at least the energy that I give to myself is going to be in the guise of, hey, got training wheels and I'm learning this and I'm learning this in the darkness. I have to put these ideas together myself, try them out and, okay, I'm going to allow myself to fall on my face if that's what happens. And I'm going to get back up and maybe I'll... Maybe I'll turn the thing upside down and, and be able to ride on it a little bit easier. Yeah. And I had to, yeah, I, because I'm so hard on myself or I was, and I still sometimes am, it's not like that just went away overnight. I'd like to say it did, but it didn't. And I know that. Um, <laughs> recognizing that it's okay not to have all the answers right away and, and being gentle with myself and others, by the way, because there's a big tendency to say, well, I thought you knew, you know, oh, I'm the first one that'll say, if anybody tells you, I just said that in a video the other day, if anybody tells you they got all the answers, run. <laughs> Because they are not telling you the truth. <laughs> That's my take anyway. Because I don't think anybody, any of us could. That's the whole idea, in my view, of us being that one laser-focused portion of source. We weren't meant to have all the answers. That's not what this is about. It can't be. If if source wanted to come in and have all the answers, why would it have bothered uh, trying to squeeze itself into this teeny tiny little portion of physicality? N no. For, for me anyway, for me, always and only just for me, that's my thoughts on the subject. It's by design that no living being has all the answers for any other living being. That's an impossibility at this juncture. For me, that's my thoughts on it. Doesn't mean I'm right. It's just, I don't, I, what would be the point? It I was, don't even think we have all the questions yet. No, exa <laughs> thank you. You're, you're exactly right on that, I think. We don't, I, we don't even know the right questions to ask. It's, it's totally by accident that we might ask the right questions for once. <laughs> it's a happy accident, maybe, but it's still by accident. But the places where we find the more questions to ask are by rooting through all of our direct observations. And, being and, comparing, the, and comparing those to the stories that we've been told. Oh, and continue to tell to ourselves as well, by the way. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because, I, you know, there's still stories that I tell to myself. I mean, you know, 
I'm not, again, I'm not holding myself up to be some great and healed whatever because I know I'm not. Well, the story I'm telling myself now is that there's some consciousness that apparently listens to what I say and manifests things in my reality. And, and I put that story together uh, for my direct observations and I'm running with it until my direct observations tell me otherwise and I author a new perception. Well, and you see, it's, but it's working out for you because it, that's your direct observation. And isn't that correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's how you get to a place of, of knowing for yourself is by making your own direct observations. Well, and for myself, that one of the direct observations that I have made and I am now very well aware of is that you wouldn't believe the looks I get because I've actually, actually out in my walking around right here locally life, I had this experience yesterday. When I say to someone that we are creator beings, I'm a creator being, so are you. I just realized recently here that I was wandering around creating in quite the unconscious fashion because that's exactly correct. That's what I've been doing. And the looks, oh, what? Yeah. Oh, you love getting those looks. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie. I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because those, those looks are your confirmation that, oh, yep, yeah, this corner of the universe needed this light. <laughs> true. true, true. <laughs> well, I, you know, I happened to be in a, it was a holistic health store. Okay. And they were, you know. He, this gentleman was giving some elderberry uh, stuff, you know, because they kind of got the flu symptoms a little bit. And, you know, he's been having bouts of dizziness that no one could seem to explain. So that felt like my cue because I've had those. And that along with the, the, the chest pains that I are not that they're they, that I know for a fact that they're not anything related to my heart. I do know of some people who were worried that they were having, you know, issues and went to have it checked out only to be told your heart's fine. I don't know. Maybe you had some indigestion or something. And I view that as an expansion. I just do. And so I, as they were standing there and, and he was saying that he went to the doctor about this dizziness and they couldn't find anything wrong and suggested that perhaps he might have a little fluid in the ear that was causing this intermittent dizziness. So I just said, that's interesting. <laughs> I, I, I talk, I have a group and I talk to folks all over the world and everyone seems to be having this. And I said, I think it might be ascension symptoms. And he looked at me, what? Ascension symptoms. What's that? Oh, okay. So we we're standing in a holistic health food store. I don't know. I thought maybe he would know what ascension is. <laughs> it was just very interesting. And he actually uh, said, wow, that is very interesting. And I shared the thing I've been having with my heart. And he said, he wondered because his, he had a, another friend that was having these off and on dizzy spells I said, well, just notice, notice, just keep, keep it in the back of your mind and notice around, see if, you know, maybe others might, you might notice that a lot of people are having little dizzy spells. Well, it's really interesting. One of, uh, one of my close friends in, in town here whoa, went to the emergency room, hmm, maybe about a week, week and a half ago. Uh, thinking that there was something wrong with her heart. 
and they couldn't find anything wrong with her. Said that she was healthy, and uh, you know, she's. I I didn't get too many descriptions of her symptoms from her, but uh, there were some times where it was a little difficult for her to stand, and she wanted to to stay sitting down. So I wonder if she was feeling dizziness as well. But it's just really interesting that you mentioned something that just popped up. Uh, I've made direct observations of it myself. Well, he actually continued on to say that it had, you know, that he, he was not a drinker and hadn't drank for years and that he had described it to his wife as feeling a bit high. That he Hmm. was, it was a bit euphoric in the dizziness. And I have seen, um, again, I have seen where folks are reporting these, they don't last very long, but they're a little, and I, I know myself that I, it happens to me. So it's very, very interesting um, interaction that I had yesterday here locally. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to be who I am anymore. I don't hide anything. So. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's uh, to behave emotionally authentic and full. That's beautiful. Well, it's just me now. So I, it's not like I have to worry about someone, <laughs> you know, not liking how I behave. So I just, I'm just me. So, and, I, and that's the other thing I, I have, I've been contacted once or twice, you know, from my videos and I'm like, Hey, you know what? I am no different out here locally that people know me than what anybody sees. This is just who I am. And I'm, I make no apologies for that anymore. I used to apologize all over the place, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't do that anymore. So. Yeah. The, the apologizing for your state of being or whatever, uh, that, that really dried up for me when, when self-allowance, when I really embraced that, it's like, you know, when I, when I really dumped my looking glass out, took a look at the observations that got me to where I was, I didn't stand a chance. There was, I was, I was going to be scrambled by, by everything. And, and then I, wow, really flipped the coin over and realized, holy cow, you're more scrambled in certain aspects than anybody else you know. Great, great fucking job for holding it all together for this long. Holy, how did you do that? Well, I can totally relate to that. And kudos to you because I actually, I think I figured out that may actually be part of the reason that I was, that my health went so far down the tubes that I was bedridden and housebound for almost 10 years because that scrambled that you talk about that's that's a and and I mean I there are videos that exist of my scrambled Um, my my husband of the time was trying to prove a few things to me and took videos of my scrambled. So I have visual because I, I wasn't present in those moments. I wasn't present. I don't remember those moments at all. There are two of them that I I was made aware of and I've kept them because when you did this for yourself, that's what they represent to me. I was, I was there and I am no longer. And that's not a, that's not an easy place to come from. Um, and to be able to look back at that at, at this point for me and mm-hmm. say, oh, wow, I actually made it out the other side. 
And it was a painful journey by make no mistake to go from that to what I am now. A, a, a pretty painful journey. So I'm not only proud of where I am now, I feel pretty damn good about where I am now, actually. Yeah. The sunlight comes through my front window in the evening and it gets right in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. It'll do that from time to time. But it's so lovely. I so enjoy having conversations with you. Oh, well, good. Yeah, these are these are flowing really well, and we're moving a lot of big energy. Yeah, we're. Uh, I definitely got tears coming down my face. I love that. I love that you are willing to just be you, too. By the way, that's because yeah. that's what I do. You know the the times in my life where I wasn't me, it was pretty much because I didn't know who I was and. Uh, the conditioning that I took on and internalized uh, kept me from exploring me. And, you know, once I was connected in with my time and started to explore me and learn me, there was only so long that you can continue to live life the old way uh, and not express your true self. And it's, it's definitely been a long process or just a process with a lot of uh, a lot of intentional energy and effort put into it and uh, you know even a year ago I wouldn't have really been able to flow with these kind of energies and experiences uh, as smoothly as as it feels like I am well, that's wonderful I don't think I would have been able to a year ago at this time either so Wow, when I look back at, at, at where I was a year ago now, I am so a different person, even just, well, even just um, back in November, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, you know what you were saying about keeping those, those videos, <clears throat> um, because that's, that's where you were and you know where you are now and you can, wow, use that as a comparison. And, you know, we've all got, uh, hmm, I don't know, little, little memories or sometimes they're physical videos or sometimes they're just, I don't know, tattoos on our consciousness, something that, that we carry from, what from the deepest depths that that we that we plunged in this uh, whatever this grander process is, and to have made enough decisions and strung them together in a way to get yourself to a point where you can look at those places that you used to be and see, wow, that was a mental prison that I was in, I was the inmate and I was the prison guard and I didn't understand it. I was in a jail, a misunderstood jail, an arcane jail. And when you realize that where you're from is often how people take their names, you know, Richie from Boston, whatever like that. Well, we can take on, Hey, I've got proof right here that I was incarnated into the arcane jail and I learned it enough that to get out and, and my journey and the ideas I strung together to help me get new perceptions and make new decisions. I can give that light to other people. And that's also the same phonetics for archangel. We're all angels. We're, Arcane jails, and now we're archangels. And I'll tell you about a vision sometime where, well, maybe I'll just tell you about it now. Please do. Don't you can't leave me. <laughs> that. 
So in this vision on the canvas in my head, uh, with just, I don't know, an emotional connection on steroids that just the volume turned way up on the emotions. I'm walking down this mine shaft. It's all brown dirt walls and there's torches on the walls. And as we're going down, it's me and Grace and Grace is just a, a young girl in a white dress, hardly speaks, does a lot of pointing and just kind of telepathy or sends me emotions. And we get all the way deep down into this, uh, what, this tunnel. And there are three metal bars that are shaped like the numeral one. So it's a 111, which is, that's followed me around my whole life. When I dumped up my looking glass, I'm just blown away at how many 111s there are. And um, there are signs, old rusty signs hanging on the wall, just really just forgotten. Some of them are falling down and she motions for me to go into, you know, in between the, the numerals, the, the, the ones. And as I do, I can see that the top parts of the ones that have the little angle and then the bottom parts that have the horizontal base, those are embedded into the, into the rock, into the floor and the ceiling. So you can only see them when you're coming from the way that we came. But as soon as you get on the other side and you're looking back out, I looked out towards Grace. They were just prison bars. And the emotional component that she sent to me was just, I was lost. I was in the arcane jail. And she pointed up at the sign. And it said, Daniel. And there were hooks above that sign. She pointed on the ground, and I picked this sign up and said, Arcane Jail. She pointed up to the hooks. I hung it up there. And she grabbed my hand, pulled me through the bars, and showed me my name hanging on the outside. And the sign above that said Arcane Jail, and she took it turned it around and it said Archangel on the other side and we walked out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You've had some really cool <laughs> emotional experiences, Danny. Oh yeah. Yeah. Potent. Yeah. I would say. Wow. I, for whatever the reason, I apparently purposefully veiled myself. I've had a, I've had my chart done in, in lots of different ways. And I've come to try to understand why I might have done that. But I, I think the only thing that I've come up with is that may, maybe, Maybe in one way. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think maybe I wouldn't have been strong enough. Is that me being hard on myself? I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, I haven't married that idea because I'm also a pretty big chicken when it comes to some stuff. So I don't know. The things that, that I've noticed the most fear around are the things that I have the least information about. It's, it's, it's the unknown. So really learning about them, being able to take new observations and put them together usually takes me to a place of peace. Because once you, once you understand something and understand the dynamic and how it's affecting you, you can usually step out of it into something that feels better for you. That's something that I'd, I'd have to hold on to for a bit and, and let it roll around because you know what, this is going to sound silly, but I, in the, in the last six or eight months, 
I, I, well, okay, at least six months, if not longer. I don't feel fear anymore. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I don't feel fearful about anything. I feel lots of other feelings about things, but fearful isn't one of them. Maybe I'm kidding myself. I've, I've, I've also uh, considered that because, you know, we're all good. It's everyone's good at hiding stuff from themselves. So maybe that's it. I don't know. That's a, that's one I got to think on for a bit. How, what do you, is there something that is that, did that vision just come to you or was there something you were ruminating about when that happened or <clears throat> that you can share? Oh, Wow. It, it was it was one piece in a long chain of reality blowing experiences uh, and the the things I was ruminating on was my my true origins before incarnating in in this particular lifetime's experience and it, the observations that I've made with all the different experiences and <laughs> the visions and just every response the universe has seemed to send back my way to answer my questions says that I'm from the angelic realm. That's how I put that together. And uh, the vision that I had with grace walking down that tunnel, you know, going past the ones and into the bars and the arcane jail and how that having that, the same phonetics as Archangel was just, uh, you know, another blatant sign that, uh, you know, it just seems absolutely crazy from where I started this entire journey, but it seems to be a consistent message. And uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking about when I had that. As an observation, a direct observation that I'm having at this moment. What's that? Well, I seem to be surrounded by archangels. <laughs> Tell me more about that. I I have I have another friend who has had their own guidance that they are archangel as well. And so I'm just making the observation now I have this experience with you. I I I'm just making this observation, not, not any kind of judgment or anything. It's, it's yet another puzzle piece that I am here now collecting. And again, I'm very well aware that I have, by the placement of my planets and what that has been explained to me at the time and, and, and position of my birth, for, for whatever the reason, I purposefully veiled myself in things. And I have, I, I have and continue to do the, the looking and the seeking to try to, well, not try, to find, you know, all the question, the, the answers to those questions, who, who am I, what am I, what am I doing? What am I, you know, so I just can continue to do right. Not really. Okay. So there's a part of me that feels like I'm just blundering through this. <laughs> just blundering through, not, not real sure if I'm doing it, you know, like the right way or anything. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, am I hitting every wall on the way out or what? <laughs> Listen, I, I can tell you, I feel, sometimes I feel like one of those little radio cars that, you know, that somebody doesn't really know how to drive. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say that I'm a weeble, you know, they wobble, but they don't fall down. But of course I do. And so I'm not a weeble. But... You know, I've, I, I tried to do the, a, a past life regression and I got nothing. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. No, I got a, a state of being. That was all I could come up with. I couldn't see anything but color. I didn't have any emotions or any feelings, just a state of being. Hanging around in color. That was it. So whatever it is, <laughs> I'm just, just so everybody's got this out here, you know, I'm just kind of. Oh, we got to cut you some slack. This is your first time around. Apparently, I guess. I don't know. But I'm I, I, either that or either that or I, I, okay, now there is a, there is a part of me that wonders if maybe there, I'm actually Yoda, but I blindfolded myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not all that short and I'm not green. I don't have those ears, but I could be, you know, considered a little, well, I'm not I don't know. Anyway, you know, there's been a purposeful blindfolding and I have no idea why. <laughs> but that's okay. I think actually I have come to the conclusion at least at this point. Doesn't mean I'm right either. That part of that is because part of that purposeful veiling, if you will, and not being able to get get anything. Now, I do, I am starting to at least pay attention to these nudges and not ask questions of myself so much because I do get little nudges, only I don't really know they're nudges. Okay, so I'm, but I, I I'm just going with what I feel and right or wrong because I don't know what else to do. Let's just put it that way. Well, yeah, exactly. And I'm because I have now felt like whatever it is I'm doing with these videos, whatever I think it is I'm doing with these videos, that might be why. I purposely veiled myself because, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm okay with telling people I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm allowing folks to see, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, the biggest behavior that everybody needs programmed into them right now is self-allowance. And that's what you're doing. Well, and so, so that's all I got on that. That, do, again, doesn't mean I'm right. It's just what I'm feeling in this moment of now. And for me, now, I used to and sometimes still do because I am hard on myself. I go, well, wait a minute. I want to know who I am. I'd like to know what it is I'm supposed to be doing because maybe I'm not doing it right. <laughs> maybe I'm supposed to do this over here. <laughs> So, but I'm trying, I really am making it so that I don't do that anymore. I just do whatever I want to or feel to do and let it go at that and quit asking all those silly ass questions. Oh, when we get done with this uh, iteration of life and we watch the, uh, what, the documentary, <laughs> you know, we're going to see that, oh my gosh, with absolute precision, we were right where we needed to be, right where we were supposed to be doing exactly what we were supposed to be doing, when we were supposed to be doing it, every step of the way. Well, here's to you being right on that. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All righty. Well, this probably feels like a good place to... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you have some closing words there to close this all out. Well, I just want to thank you for for all that you've shared in this video, and 
I can't wait till we do it again. I'm <laughs> I, I, I am a sucker. I will talk and talk and talk. I love to have conversations and I love having conversations with you. So yeah, um, well, this has been a lot of fun for me too. Like, like uh, I came out of the angelic closet on this video. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and learning that I'm actually very well surrounded uh, by the angelic realm is actually very comforting to me. So I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. With oh, you're me. welcome. And with everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're all welcome. I feel like I'm on a high dive with that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Yeah. Have wings, don't forget. <laughs> well, I, I know this now. <laughs> yes, that's right. You do. Yeah, that makes it easier to jump. <laughs> so there's going to be a link to Danny's channel in the, the show more section of this video. And... Um, again, I, I just appreciate you coming and talk with, talking with me, and um, I look forward to having more conversations with you. And there will be, I'm, I'm putting it out there again, anyone that wants to be a part of the PPC squad, the Puzzle Piece Collecting Squad, I am collecting emails. I will not share those emails with anyone ever for any reason. I'm only doing it because I am going to start probably pretty soon doing live shows. And if you want an invitation to that show, um, I'll need to have your email. So uh, my email information will be in the body of this video and how to join Conscious Conversations Central Facebook page will also be in that video. And there may be a blog coming up. I'm not sure. I'm looking into that, what that all entails. Again, I don't really know much about blogging, but, you know, hey, I'm willing to find out. <laughs> well, right now you're pretty much video blogging. True, true that, true that. But there are some times that I'd like to have, I don't know, an online presence where folks can go because there are folks that don't participate on Facebook, would rather not. Mm -hmm. And... Um, there are some I'm one of those. Yeah, I know that about you. And there are articles and things that I have found that um that I that I I enjoy and that I would like to share with folks that aren't Facebook friendly. That that if I had my had a blog space, I could, you know, put them there as well. And well, I've been encouraged to maybe write some, so we'll see. We'll see. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I always think I talk better more than I write, but, but we'll see. That's again, me being hard on me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I know that there's definitely people that, uh, that will transcribe audio as well. And, oh. you know, voice recognition, that, that seems to be getting a lot better too. Um, it, it's so good, in fact, that uh, this past summer uh, on a camping trip that I went at, uh, I was sharing space right next to uh, a camping party that was um, had a lot of deaf people. And uh, I just got into the best conversations by, by grabbing my phone and just opening up a notepad and using the voice dictation. And I would talk into that and they would read what was coming up and they were on their phones. They, they type something in quick and show it to me. And then I just oh. talk my response and, and there were, we're out in the middle of, of nowhere, you know, in the woods, uh, using smart devices to communicate. It was pretty amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you again, Danny. And, uh, I, you know, like I said, the, the information will be in the body of this video and subscribe if you feel led and share and like if you feel so led on this video. And so until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>